In this video, I'm going to talk about conditional logic and gravity forms. Now, I'm going to sound like a giant nerd by saying that this is probably one of my favorite things to do in WordPress is to use conditional logic in my forms because it really opens up an unlimited amount of options as far as how my forms work. Right. So the main thing that people use conditional logic for is showing or hiding form fields depending on what previous inputs were. And this allows us to really slim down our forms and just show people the fields that are relevant to them. And so I'm going to show you what I mean. So let's create a new form and we'll do a conditional logic form and click create. And so for this example, and try to keep in mind, everything I'm showing can be used on one form. I'm only creating new forms to show you examples so you don't confuse the two, but uh, I'll show you how they can all be used together. So for this example, let's say that we were going to have a camp, a summer camp, and this was part of an application form for parents that were sending their kids to our camp. So for the first thing, let's just say that we would have, you know, the child's name, uh, and then more importantly, let's say that we wanted to find out any kind of dietary requirements that those kids had. So we could have a drop down field that says, does your child have any special dietary needs? And we'll just do a simple yes and no choice for that. And under placeholder, we'll do please select. So that's the first thing that they're seeing, not yes or no. So it loads up like that. And then let's just save that form. So, uh, so what we want to do is create a, now a second drop down field. And we will say, or actually, let's do a checkbox field. And we'll say, please select all that apply. And we can do something like, you know, vegetarian or, you know, lactose intolerant and let's say vegan, right? And then we'll add in another choice for other. And then I'm going to update that, that again. So now I'll go into my checkboxes field and I'll click on advanced. And then I'm going to click on enable conditional logic. And the reason that I was saving in between each field is in order for the fields above to show up in this drop down, we need to save it. And that kind of registers it as a new field, right? So what I want to do now is I'm going to, if I click this drop down, you're going to see the fields that are above this one. And that's the ones I can use conditional logic for. So I'm just going to click on, does your child have any special dietary needs? And here is our comparisons, right? So I can say, is, is not, greater than, less than, contains, etc. So I can do this with numeric values and do greater or less than, or I can do it with certain text answers. So I'm going to do is, yes. What this means is, you can read this above, it says show this field if all of the following match this condition. So if this field is yes, then this is going to appear. So if they say yes to does your child have any special dietary needs, this field, this checkbox field is then going to appear. And you can do this, this, you know, you can do it with show this field or hide this field if the condition is met. And you can also have multiple conditions and you, the field can appear or hide if all of those conditions are met or if any of those conditions are met. So you have to kind of work out your logic ahead of time of how you want these fields to work. But let me show you now what this looks like. So if I create a new page, And I'll add in our form and click on publish. And then I take a look at that on our front end. You can see that right now, all I see is name and our question. But if I select yes, now it shows me my other field. And that's the basics of how conditional logic works. But there's a lot that you can do with that. For example, now let's just go back to our form. And under our conditional logic form, I'll go back in there and edit it. And I can say, well, what if they select other? Let's say I wanted to have a paragraph field and I go to advanced and I click enable conditional logic and I'll say, if does your child have any special dietary needs is, or sorry, if uh, please select all that apply is other, it's gonna show me this paragraph field and I can say, please describe 
in detail. And I'll update that field. So now if I select yes, it shows me the options. And if I click other, it'll say, please describe in detail, and then they can fill it out. So you can see the basics of how conditional logic work. Essentially, I can show or hide fields based on how people answered the form fields above it. But there's a couple other uses for this. So it can also be used in our calculating form. So if I go back to forms, and I open up my quiz, for example. So what we could do is we could create an HTML field and we can say, you got a perfect score. So remember that in our quiz, both of these were worth five points. So what we wanna do is we're gonna to go to advanced, we're gonna enable conditional logic, and we're gonna say, if our quiz total is uh, equal to, or is 10, then show this content. And that will show that you, you know, it'll show the text, you got a perfect score. So let's duplicate this field and say, try harder next time. And we'll say, we'll go to advanced and we'll go, if our quiz total is less than 10, show our sorry information, right? So now let's go back to our pages and we'll just bring up our quiz page. And so now I can put in my name and remember I'm only seeing this field because I'm an administrator, right? So now we do George Washington and we do four so you can see once I filled both of these out correctly, I have you got a perfect score. And before, if I select a wrong answer and my score is less than 10, it's gonna show try harder next time. So that's a, you know, a pretty basic example, but you can see how you can you know, display or show information based on conditional logic. And that conditional logic can also be applied to any calculations that we're having, right? And so the last thing that we can use conditional logic for is we can also use it for different notifications. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new form and let's do, actually I will work off our standard contact form here. So we'll go to gravity forms demonstration. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new field for dropdown or a new dropdown field. And we're gonna say department, right? And we'll say accounting, tech support general, and we'll save that field. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our settings and go to notifications. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new notification and based on the department that they selected, we're gonna have them, they're gonna have the form results sent to a different email address. So we can create multiple notifications and enable or disable them with this toggle. And we can also have multiple notifications. So let's say that we're gonna create a new one for the accounting department. And we'll enter in an email, you know, accounting at ourcompany.com or whatever that email address should be. And then we're gonna go down to this bottom and click enable conditional logic. And we're gonna say, if department is accounting, then this notification should go out. So we would create a new notification for each department and then set up this conditional logic. And then in our notifications, we would enable any of the notifications that we want to be available. So this is a great way to have forms go to different people based on who's filling out the form and the information that they put in. So we can use conditional logic to show or hide fields in our form. We can use conditional logic to show information based on results of calculations. And we can use conditional logic for the notifications of where our form should go when people fill it out. So you can see that the options are really, really unlimited here. You can have a ton of different conditional logic going on in your form at the same time. And there's a lot that we can show or hide our users depending on how they fill out forms. And that's all under the umbrella of conditional logic. 
So it's, it may seem a little bit complicated at first, but it is actually really easy once you get the hang of it. If you do have any questions about conditional logic, please feel free to post in the forums. Again, this is something I really, really enjoy doing. I know that sounds really nerdy, but it can be really fun to kind of play with the different options in conditional logic to have some really unique and interesting forms at the end of it. So that's basically everything we need to know right now about the basics of conditional logic. Go ahead and check out the next video, which is going to talk about CSS classes and basic styling for our course.